was giving me a lot of trouble in Canada at a place called Hamilton. You see, a lecture, at the end of the lecture, this man here is asking me questions and he won't let go. Another question and another question. Fortunately, you haven't got the chance tonight, you see. This is all written on paper, so you've got no chance of coming back in a hurry. But that man there, verbal question, one question, I answer that, another one and another one. Eventually, when the meeting is over, he's still around me, he won't let me go. From his tongue, I can make out he's an Arab, and from his, what he's asking, I know he's a Christian. So I said, you Arab? He said, yes. He said, I'm a Christian from the Lebanon. I said, you know Arabic? He said, yes. Of course, he says, that's my mother tongue. I said, go, go, you don't know Arabic. This is intellectual judo. You know judo? <laughs> intellectual. You say, no, I mustn't do it like that. So I said, look, you, you are 1,000 million, you're doing your own way. Go ahead, I'm not interfering with you. This is my way, you see? When I was young, I did judo, I did boxing, I did wrestling, I did weightlifting. Therefore, you see, I'm 69, I'm still standing straight. <laughs> So I said, go, go, man, you don't know Arabic. He said, you mean to say you know my language better than me? I said, no, no. I'm ashamed to tell you that I'm a born Muslim, but I don't know Arabic. It's the language of the Quran, it's the language, language of Jannah, language of my prophet, but I don't know Arabic. I'm ashamed of myself. Then so what do you mean I don't know Arabic? I said, you see, you read this book, the Bible, in your own mother tongue, in Arabic. He said, yes. And I said, you are understanding the exact opposite of what you're reading. Not what is there. If you are told in the Bible, thou shalt not commit adultery, you are understanding as if it is saying, thou shalt commit adultery. So, what do you mean? You take me for a zombie? I said, no, 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 no. I said, look, I will prove it to you. I will prove it to you. So I said, you remember when Jesus went to that upper room where they had the Last Supper after his alleged crucifixion? I said, he goes in and he wishes his disciples, Shalom Alaikum, peace be unto you, in Hebrew, same as Salam Alaikum. When he said, peace be unto you, I said, his disciples were terrified. So why were they terrified? When you meet your long-lost master, your uncle, your grandfather, you're happy. The Arab, as he embraces one another, kisses one another. I used to feel very funny before, but I'm used to it now. <laughs> Some people in the middle, they kiss on my forehead. You know, I always feel so funny, you know. <laughs> but now I'm getting used to it. However, the Arab and the Jew, he embraces one another. See, his master embraced. Instead of doing that, the guys are terrified. I said, why were they terrified? He says, no, Luke tells us, chapter 24, verse 36, that they were affrighted because they thought he was a spirit. I said, did it look like a spirit? He says, no. Then I said, why should they think the man is a spirit when he didn't look like one? He's puzzled. So I said, look, the reason is I gave all that. Then I said, you know, Jesus wants to assure them that they're not what they're thinking. They're thinking he has come from, back from the dead. He's resurrected. So he says, Unzuru ila says, behold my hands and my feet. Inni ana huwa, that it is I myself. So husuni wanzuru, he says, handle me and see. Fa inna ruha, laysa lahu lahman wa izamun. For the spirit has no flesh and bones, as you see me have. And they felt him, and they believed not for joy, means they were overjoyed and wondered. What happened, man? We thought the man was dead and buried. So he says, Aindakum hahuna ta'am, have you got any here anything to eat? Fana waluhu juz ammin samakin, wa shay and min shahadi asalin, fa achaza wa akala kudamahum. And they gave him a piece of broil fish and a honeycomb, and he took it, and he ate in the very side. As said to prove what? That is the ghost, he's a spook, he's a spirit. No, to prove I'm the same fellow man, damn fools, what are you afraid of me for? Shh, I bowled him over, this Arab Christian. That language. So I do learn these snippets of from different languages. I don't know Hebrew, I don't know Indonesian, I don't know, you know, Arabic, but I don't know Spanish, but I can give it to you. So how do I do it? I say I have a unique way of learning. Unique method, unique. Nobody, I'm a unique person, you know that. There's not another person on earth. No, this is, everybody's unique. Wallah, everybody's unique. Everybody's unique. See, I'm not boasting, but everybody's unique. I told my wife one day, that I'm unique. She doesn't believe it. <laughs> but I proved it to her. She didn't believe it. She's thinking I'm boasting. Nobody like me. I said, no, no, no. I said, I'm unique. There is really nobody like me. She says, no. So I said, you know, in the family, Mr. So-and-so, I don't want to take the name. So she sees, mentally, she sees the father. I said, is there another guy like him? 
So she sees, she says, no. I said, our son, elder son, my elder son, Ibrahim. I said, is there another guy like him? So she scans. He says, no. I said, your brother, Ibrahim, her brother. I said, is there another guy like him? So she scans. She says, no. I said, you see, I tell you, everybody is unique. <laughs> but I have a unique method. It is unique. I said, you see, I use the Bible to learn these languages. Any language I want to learn, I go and get a Bible in that language because they got it in 2,000 different languages. And I know the Bible in English extensively by heart. People think I'm half Hafizul Bible, which is not the case. Half Hafizul Quran is not the case. But it seems at times, half Hafizul Quran, half Hafizul Bible. I'm not. But I know this book extensively. I haven't come across a single Christian in my life who knows his Bible better than I know. Alhamdulillah. So, because I know this so much by heart, if I want to learn Arabic, I get the Arabic Bible. And I open the verse which I already know. Very easy to learn and understand every word. I went to Indonesian, I went and got an Indonesian Bible. So, already what I know, I look for it in Indonesian. I went to Zulu, I did the same. Swahili, I did the same. That's how I learned. It's a unique method. And I want you to do the same. In other words, I'm going to tell you all to go and buy Bibles and go and learn like that. I says, no. But what I have in English, the Bible, you have in Arabic, the Quran. I said, use that. You know this? Verses? I said, yes. Now you get an English translation. Look at the verse that you already know. So behold, the angel said, O Mary, memorize that. Behold, the angel said, O Mary, inna Allah astafaki wa taharaki wa astafaki ala nisa al alameen. So I said, learn that English. Verse by verse. You know Arabic? Now learn English. Now, once you have done that, your vocabulary is improving. Construction of sentences is improving. Now, an opportunity for use. I said, here around Dahran, I to, I'm told that there were some 10,000 Americans. I said, they're all your customers. Any white man you see, you ask him, excuse me, sir, what church you belong to? He gives you a name. You know he's your customer. He says, you know, we believe in Jesus. I said, yes. He's thinking maybe you want some cigarettes or chocolate from him. He says, you know what my book says about Jesus? He says, no. It says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Wa is qalatil malaika to ya Maryamu. Say, behold, the angel said, O Mary, in Allah has tafaki, wa taharaki, wa tafaki. I said, look, do that. Practice. Talk, talk, talk. And as soon as you go to Britain or America for studies, you will be on a better wicket. You see, the biggest problem you students have, I know. At that conference, I was told that number one problem when you come to this country, though you have learned English at home, your language, your problem is language, number one. Second year, problem number one, language. Third year, problem number one, language. Fourth year, maybe language takes second place or third place. Some other problems. Language, language, language. That's your problem. So I said, now, this is how you master. You do Allah's work. You talk. You read Arabic, Allah gives you sawab, sawab, sawab. Every letter that you read, He gives ten, ten sawabs, blessings. When you say alif, lam, mim, ten, 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 thirty sawabs. You say Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, it's a one hundred and ninety sawabs. So, is qalatil malaika to ya Maryamu? I didn't count them, but over two hundred sawabs. Blessings, blessings, you're getting sawab. Arabic is becoming more fluent. Your English is improving. You're getting the courage now. Every time you meet a man, you can talk. You become a talker. You know, if we gave you the opportunity tomorrow morning to ask questions from the floor, not even a quarter of this will be here. You know that? Terrified. Terrified. I've seen it again and again. As soon as they come and write, flood. A flood of questions. Why? You are terrified to stand up and speak. Why? Because you're not used to. This is it. Stand up and speak, man. Ask. Make a fool of yourself, but as you keep on making a fool of yourself, you'll improve. Catch your customers. Here, man, what an opportunity. 200 million.